Hey, g'day people, it's Matt here from Matt Carve. So today we're gonna to carve a little gargoyle. Now, this is made out of clay, and I'm gonna show you what the cool thing is about making things out of clay first, and then transferring them into wood. So, that's what we're gonna to do today. Okay, so first of all, I just wanna talk a little bit about this oil-based clay. Now, the difference between oil-based clay and water-based clay is um, essentially, oil-based clay will not dry out. So I made this last week and you can still see it's very malleable um, and it's not going to dry out too. It like will last, I've got some that's 11 years old and you can still use it. But the problem is this, if it gets dusty, it kind of gets a little bit dirty and um, not so good to use. So as long as you keep it clean, you're gonna use it for a very long time. So you could sort of make something like this and then do your sort of like wooden gargoyle from it and then move on to the next thing so you're sort of essentially making a maquette sort of like a model of what you're going to make and you might think well that's kind of like a waste of time but the good thing about it is you can sort of like figure out things in this before you make your wood wood sculpture because the thing with this is you can sort of like play around with expressions. You can sort of like move the eyebrow up like that, or that one down. You can sort of like move this hood up like this. You know, all these kind of things, turn around the nose, take out the tongue. And if you wanted to, you could put a completely different nose on. Say if you didn't like this one, you just sort of like um, take it off and then put another one on. Um, so essentially the benefit really is because in wood, you don't have a second chance, and this, you do. So you can just keep on changing it. And once you've done this, then you can sort of like use this to look at while you're making your wooden sculpture. And say, with these eyebrows, you're going to know to leave wood up here and wood down here. And you can take measurements and all that. There's a few different ways you can do it. Today, I'm going to sort of like show you one way where you sort of like take a photograph of it this way and then turn it around like, well, I turned around like this and took it face on. So you have sort of like a profile and a side shot. Okay, so I've taken my two photos and I just make sure that they are the same size. So I just measure from there to there and there to there and they look pretty similar. And so that would be going on the face well, on the side, and this one on the face, what you want to do is you want to make sure maybe sort of like the bottom of them line up or the nose lines up so they correspond to each other. Then we're going to put uh, carbon paper underneath this and trace onto that. So we're going to have like a profile and also a front shot so we can get rid of a lot of wood before we even start. Now, I know a lot of you don't have a bandsaw, and you can still do this, but you sort of then, you know how to carve up to that line. You could use a handsaw maybe and get rid of maybe the corners. That would help out. But yeah, so let's get on with this and move along. Okay, so here we are on the bandsaw and we're cutting the face out. Um, so this is looking directly at the face. And you see where I'm going here, you want to leave a little bit of room around the carving because then you can cut it in just two pieces. So, and you'll understand why I do that very, very shortly. So here we go when we're cutting the other side. I find what the bandsaw is one of the most useful tools in the workshop for cutting things down and um, cutting odd shapes as well it's a really useful tool that you might want to look into getting one they do produce a lot of dust though so you can see there i've got the three pieces the one in the middle and that's what we've just cut out there so now what i'm going to do is going to put those two pieces back well three pieces back together and we're going to cut out this bit so essentially we're cutting out two sides of the carving and we need to tape it up because once it goes through the bandsaw it needs to be stable and not move around. So I'll probably 
sort of like cut half of the profile and then tape up the half that I've already cut just to stabilize it again. And this is a good way to make spoons as well. I've made a lot of spoons like this so you end up with a spoon blank uh, that you're pretty close to even being finished. Okay, so pretty much we have cut that out. So we've got that profile view there, but we've also got the front view. And then we're just gonna have to carve in the details. Sounds pretty easy, but you know. <laughs> so when you just take off those. So there you go. So you see you're gonna now have to put in sort of like where the nose goes and all of that kind of stuff and uh, where that hood goes. But we've, uh, gotten quite a long way by just using the saw and a little bit of um, template work I guess you would say. Okay so what I do is I'll kind of look at the sculpture and the actual photos that I have and try and put in sort of little details and clues and sort of like reference points. You can see I've put in the cheek there and the eye and I was kind of like drawing it from there and, but you've got to remember it's not going to all line up um, because that is, I guess, the profile of the highest points. And so the lower points you're not going to see, but they will be there, if you get what I mean. So the cheek is there, but it's not there in the profile. It's only the nose that's in the profile. I hope that makes sense. So as you can see, I've kind of drawn in the eyes and the nose. The nose is crooked, so... Um, you yeah, sort of drawn in a crooked nose there and that profile there so that's the nostril that I'm just going up to so I can go back to that and I tend to when I carve faces always do the nose first and then I'll reference everything to that nose it's just the way I do it some people carve the eyes first or uh, do the whole lot in a basic kind of form you just got to kind of come up with what is um, I guess easy for you to do and I'm um, sort of like I go slow at this point and just try and put in sort of basic details so I'm just trying to get that nose to stick out at the moment by lowering each side of it and with gargoyles and very expressive kind of carvings the both sides are very asymmetrical so you don't have to carve them at the same time um, I'm what I'm doing is I'm carving one side and then I'm going to compare it to the other side and so work off like that and also the eyes on this one is pretty easy to do because really they're just a round kind of blob a uh, with a hole in it uh, I'm not too worried about putting eyelids or anything like that on and a lot of the I guess the uh, gargoyles made out of stones they have very very basic kind of shapes and I'm not going to talk too much about burrs in this video but you can see I'm using one of my favorite cutsall burrs and if you don't have this cutsall burr I think you should really get it because it's really great for fine details this is the fine cutsall taper burr and it's one of my favorites just because it's so adaptable uh, you can get in little tight spaces and you can draw with it or whatever you want to do with it. Um, that combined with the uh, the flame burr uh, is a really good combination. And yes, I do have a Cutsell affiliate link in the uh, description on this video. And I will also link these little burrs here on Amazon they are really good as well for getting in and sort of like putting really deep lines in and using the face of the burr as well to sort of like round off those uh, eyes and because they're diamond burrs they leave a quite a smooth finish 
and I'm just sort of like pretty happy with that side now so I'm just going to draw in the pupil on this one just to give me an idea of what it kind of looks like in the end and I quite like that it's kind of like looking upwards and that's why that eyebrow is going up as well and the other eyebrow will be going down so we're going to start carving the other side of the face now and just looking at the reference there so just draw in the eyebrow now um this carving is not going to look exactly like the clay carving but it really gives you a really good understanding on how to carve sort of like expressions and all of that kind of stuff you're never going to get it exactly the same but it's giving you just the opportunity to not just follow photos but to follow a three-dimensional kind of object on what you want to kind of achieve now you might actually even see like if you're shopping in a uh, thrift store or something a model of an eagle um, and if it's really cheap and you think you can carve it you should probably buy it because then you can sort of like copy that sculpture because I find it easier to copy a sculpture when you're carving in three dimensions as opposed to copying from a photo and making it three-dimensional And here I am going to try and sort of get that roundness of the nose happening sort of well it's not roundness but like a crooked nose happening so it's bending to one side and I've left myself plenty of material to use so there's a little tip for you sort of don't make your nose really skinny at the start you might want to add character to it so put a, a bend in it so if you've got sort of like a lot of wood there you can sort of add the bend in as you go. And even on your like your wood spirits or whatever you're carving if you leave it quite chunky at the start you can sort of add sort of like that bend in later so we're sort of like um just sort of like doing the other side of the carving now and using that cut saw taper bear again putting in just sort of like details and then i usually go in with a diamond burr after that to get sort of like real sort of like definition and diamond burrs and cutter burrs that's a cutter burr there and just sort of like lining that eye up the great thing about gargoyles is they don't have to be perfect it's actually kind of better if like one eye is bigger than the other eye um, the facial expressions don't really make sense it's sort of like but it's just sort of like works really well they're really kooky kind of things to carve they're kind of cool i like them so i'm just sanding it up here and you can sort of see that real disc sander it's really great for that and i you know i did get that one off uh amazon but i'm i don't like it as much as this one here the foam one that i haven't managed to find a link for you guys <laughs> sorry but if you lived in new zealand you can buy it but um i'm not sure where you would buy this one the thing that i like about this one is the foam on it is just really really soft so it sort of like changes the angles and it makes sanding so much easier so you can sort of see it does actually shape as well because i've got quite a coarse grit on this disc and i've left the eyes till last putting in those little pupils and i'm just using a dremel wheel point burr use a lot this for engraving and all of that kind of stuff and it's looking pretty cool i'm pretty happy with this i'm going to now add a wood die to it okay so i quite like um my wood carvings to be a little bit darker so what you can do is just put a um what's called a wood die on it and this one is mahogany wood die um differences between like wood dyes and stains is stain tends to sit a little bit more on the top it's made out of sort of like pigments that don't penetrate the wood as much this one as you can see is quite dark but what we can do is we can sand it back so the highlights will come out and you can get wood dyes in really cool colors like blue and green and all of those kind of cool colors 
and you can dilute it if you want so to make it a little bit lighter should be wearing gloves while i'm doing this but i'm not and you can get um water based dyes and you can also get spirit based dyes this is a spirit based dye it's probably got i don't know it smells a bit funky at the start sort of like maybe like i don't know a sweet methylated spirits or something But, oh my god, it dries really fast. You gotta be careful that you don't sort of like overdo it in one part. Then you sort of like get a little bit patchy. See, and the thing with wood dyes, if you get it right, it still shows through the grain. Whereas um, stains tend to cover up the grain. And I think, like, I would think, my, like, my favourite colour is mahogany. And this is called Antique Mahogany Brie Wax. Is it Brie Wax? Yeah. So this is it, yeah. Gotta be really careful with spilling it, because it goes everywhere. Um, that's what that red is there. <laughs> that's where I spilled it last time. You know, I always think, like, the carving table. I don't want to, like, I know I put carvings on here and all of that. Um, but I'm not going to treat it, like, really, really sort of like keep it pristine or anything like that because it's, it's a working table you know and i quite like all the scars that are left on a on a table it tells a story um of all the work that you've done look at that i've managed to not, not get any on my fingers at all Haven't finished yet though. <laughs> what you could do is maybe oh there's a bit much in there. Um you could actually paint those little pupils to make them stand out a little bit more. Um and you can actually go back with sort of like a diamond burr and well we could do that actually. We'll go back with the diamond burr and go over the um eye. And so you can sort of see that will stand out more. Okay, so that's all kind of dry. That was only like about a minute or two. And then you can go in with this. And you can bring out the highlights of things. Now I like, like a lot of people, they have different, they like different things in their finishes. I always like sort of like an old worldly feeling um, that it's been around for a while. And it's not sort of like pristine or anything like that. That's what I kind of like. Um, but you might like something different. So you might take a bit more time and getting everything sort of sorted out. I quite like those kind of like spots in there. Yeah, that looks quite cool. Now you might want to put a wood wax on it. And you can wait till this dries and then put a varnish on it if you want as well. If I'm going to put this outside, I just don't tend to put varnishes on because they tend to flake off. You can put an oil on, but you're going to have to kind of repeat putting that oil on. Or you can just put it outside and see what happens. Okay, so what I've got going here is just a um, diamond tip burr. Those ones from Master Carver. Really good, these ones. I really like the shape for getting into little areas. We're trying to lighten up these eyes. And you can see there I am just lightening up the outside of the pupil. Taking that back so it kind of like highlights that ring around the pupil. To make it stand out a little bit more. And yeah pretty much this is it people. I hope this really helped. I know it was a long video. It's really hard to know how long to make videos. I know uh the dedicated watchers will watch this, but I guess the people that only want um, like a 20 second tip, uh, it's not going to sit through all of this. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see how it goes and uh, let me know in the comments if you like these longer form videos. Okay, well, we'll see you next time.